absorbed under the sound of my mother's gentle voice. I heard with passionate in interest as she retold the stories of great men of old, who went to faraway lands, gave away everything to share the love of Jesus. Men like George Mueller, Hudson Taylor, Livingston. Do these ring a bell? Have you heard of them? Amazing people who served and brought so many people to Christ. Under a bamboo hut infested with mosquitoes was my vision of what Mission Field was like. And I prayed one day, Lord, I want to be the one under that bamboo hut retelling the stories of the gospel. But Puerto Rico did not seem to be that place. I grew up in Puerto Rico and as you all know, it's a big country developed. And I was thinking, will I ever be able to go to the mission field? Um, as a sixth generation Adventist, I grew up knowing about Christ. I knew about Sabbath school, went to church every Sabbath, eating haystacks and veggie blankets. That was our life, you know, a seventh day Adventist. <laughs> Nevertheless, God has no grandchildren, relationships. He only has sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So as a young child, I was homeschooled, and I had a deep desire to know the Lord more. So I committed my life to the Lord and said, Lord, my life is yours. Lead me wherever you want me to go. And maybe one day, yes, one day, you will lead me to a foreign land to share the love of Christ with others. As a child, I, did, I barely knew how to read, and my mother would give me these Bible heroes books, and she would give them to me, and I would sit down and do my personal devotions. I could barely read, but I would see the pictures, and it was fascinating. So slowly but surely, I got to know the Lord, and I fell in love with him. I fell in love with the Lord, the Jesus of these stories, and found out that this Savior, our Lord, is real and wants to have a relationship with each one of us. So I began to know him more, and when I was 12, I decided my time had finally come. After waiting so many years and so many years for this long-awaited trip, I could finally go. So I came to my brother and I told him, I was so excited, I told him, I am going as a missionary to China. I'm ready to go. But interestingly enough, he didn't receive my exuberance as I thought. But yet, in a mournful manner, he said, Why are you leaving me at such a young age? I'm your brother. Don't leave me alone. It was a childish interest and excitement. Yet the Lord knew that one day, yes, one day, he would open the way. He would lead me into his perfect path. But in my sincerity, I had lost the, the point and the purpose of mission field. I had lost a view that many times mission field is where you are. Wherever you are is the moment when you have to share Christ. If it's in a, in a long, long place far away or, is it, or if it's in your own home, the Lord needs us to be missionaries. But you know, sometimes we overlook opportunities around us, thinking of the future when I grow up, thinking of the future, oh yes, when I get my career, then I will serve you, Lord. Oh, when I know more about the Bible, oh yes, then I will give Bible studies. And we miss opportunities of sharing Christ with their thirsting souls. But my view on mission field and service drastically changed, though I still wanted to be a missionary. But I felt God's calling that where I was, I needed to be a missionary. I needed to share God's life. And that is why I decided to fulfill God's purpose for that day, for that hour, each day fulfilling God's will. So we lived in Puerto Rico. We lived a comfortable life. We had everything we needed, yet our hearts were not set on these earthly stuff. We, we desired to serve the Lord. We desired to follow his perfect will. Nevertheless, God kept on calling us higher and higher to share him. We started working in our local church, going from church to church, sharing about Christ, um, sharing the experiences we had with him. And that was a big blessing until one day, 
Much to our surprise, we received an email with a call to go as missionaries to Nepal. Was this the day, the long-awaited day that finally had come? After much prayer and fasting, we decided that if the Lord called us to go, we would humbly accept the calling. But, but, he needed to sell the house. In a time when the financial um, crisis was going on, it was very hard to sell a house. The house in front of us had been trying to sell that for like five to seven years with no success. Yet, if the Lord was in charge of this, wouldn't he sell the house? Was this such a big task for the Lord? Not at all. Amazingly, the Lord did a miracle. In one month, the house was sold. Both of my dad's clinics were sold. But believe me, this was a faith trip. Even before we sold our house, we started selling our stuff by faith, knowing that this was God's will. Even we were not sure if the house was actually going to be sold, if we were <clears throat> going to be left with nothing inside the house. But the Lord led. Notwithstanding, the enemy was not happy, and he made sure we had trials and we had a very hard time. But we knew the Lord was calling us, so we kept moving forward. One month before we were about to leave, my dad got sick and he needed to go into surgery. Now what? Was God still leading? Was his hand still before us? We knew this was God's calling, and we knew that trials were coming, but this was God's call, so we should move forward. So we kept on moving forward. But you know, many times when trials come in our lives, we question if God is leading us or not. We understand, we understood God's calling, so we went forward and we said, if this is the Lord's plan, the enemy cannot detain us from fulfilling his will. So we move forward, amen? amen. After a lot of work, prayer, struggles, and trials, we finally mounted our plane for 18-hour flight all the way to Thailand. From Thailand, we got another plane eight hours until we reached our final destination in Nepal. As the plane was hovering above the land, I could see the rich green land of Nepal, and I was so excited. If you know me well, you know I get excited about stuff, and it was so exciting because I knew that this was the Lord's will. So I started praying, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me not come all the way here empty. So I prayed, and the Lord really blessed. As we landed in the airport, our ears were welcomed by the hustle and bustle of Kathmandu, the capital. As we went our way in our little van, a cloud of dust would go around us, surround us, and you could see cows, people, motorcycles, trucks, cars, trying to fit in this car lane. It was an amaz amazing experience. But we became in love with the people. We started loving them. We saw that they were hungry for the gospel. It was a pagan country that had been, for so many years, following the devil. So we were learning to trust him. His passion became my passion. His mission, my mission. And I started learning about him. Or Mr. Le Asi Dinojos, it was like, what in the world? What are they saying? But at, at the beginning, I didn't even know what they were saying, but slowly but surely, the Lord blessed. And I became one of them, including the language. My experience in Nepal was amazing. I saw the Lord opening doors, baptism, training centers, youth conference. The Lord is working in Nepal. Nevertheless, the Lord needs you. He's calling each one of us. In Romans 10, 13-15, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The Lord needs you. If not now, when? If not, me, if not you, who will go? We need to be missionaries wherever we are. As soon as we're born Christians, we're called to be missionaries and to share the love of Christ. Christ. I have experienced the hand of God leading in my life. 
I have seen him change me and forgive me from my guilt. I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I hear. I was lost, but now I'm found. He saved me, and that's why I share him.